This is terrible. Everyone says it's authentic. The FBI says it's authentic. The church historian says it's authentic. They don't want it to be authentic. Why would they say it's authentic, you know? And he says, I don't care what anyone says. I'm telling you, it's not the actual wording of Martin Harris. Gerald came out in opposition to some documents that had been put forward as authentic and um, got us in trouble with uh, the Christian community who thought these documents would be a great tool in countering Mormon claims. And so they were kind of dismayed when Gerald started questioning the documents. The questioning of the documents came about because of the earliest things that bothered Gerald when he first started his research. Because when he was, before I met him, when he was first starting to look into Mormon matters, he was reading his Bible and his Book of Mormon all the time. And the more he read the King James Bible and the Book of Mormon, the more he realized there were patterns of phrases that were in the Book of Mormon lifted from the Bible that couldn't have been written by a Nephite in 300 BC. You can't have someone using phrases of Paul, for instance, in the Old Testament portion of the Book of Mormon. So when you find these different phrases, uh, then the question is, well, what kind of translation are we having of the Book of Mormon? Uh, would these King James phrases transfer over? Uh, would you really be able to do that kind of a work? So that had put him on the track of noticing patterns of repeats of phrases that indicate plagiarism and lifting. Then uh, we got challenged later on a document we had printed by Oliver Cowdery, one of the witnesses of the Book of Mormon. And he had supposedly written this little pamphlet that implicated Sidney Rigdon as being part of the author of the Book of Mormon. And uh, Joel got studying it all, and he realized that you could see parallels of Oliver Cowdery's phrasing from documents written in the 1830s and in this letter supposedly written by Cowdery in 38, but earlier letters uh, on different topics would uh, show to Gerald. I mean, he would just see that you know, all this came from that. And he determined that this Cowdery defense was a fake document because of the parallel lifting of phrases. So he's already uh, developing his skill uh, of seeing how phrases are lifted to make something look like they're written by an author that it wasn't really written by. So when the Cow when the um, Mark Hoffman made up the Salamander letter, the question was, well, is it really authentic? It's supposed to be a letter written by Martin Harris, one of the witnesses of the Book of Mormon. So the more Gerald studies the early um, statements by people that knew Martin Harris, Gerald started realizing, well, there's phrases in these people's letters that appear in this salamander letter. And so it looks like someone's taken different people that knew Martin Harris, their statements, and taken phrases to try, try to make their new document sound like Martin Harris. So he was convinced it was a fraud. And uh, but I was like everybody else, you know, who are you to say it's a fraud? You don't have any forensic training. Everybody's looked at this, the FBI's looked at it, everybody, church historian, they all say it's authentic. And he says, I don't care what anyone says, I'm telling you. Uh, it was lifted from these other letters. It's not the actual wording of Martin Harris. It's a uh, cribbed from <laughs> different people's interviews of what Martin Harris was said to have said. Was he very confident about that, or was he um, unsure? Was he like, I oh, think no. that's the case? Once he came to the conclusion, it was sure. It, uh, it wouldn't have mattered who said it was authentic. Well, they already had said it was authentic. And he said, no, no, it's not. You know, you guys can go write your histories, do whatever you want, but I'm telling you, it's not. And so we even had a split 
uh, editorial in our newsletter <laughs> on this uh, because Gerald came out uh, with and was having me circulate this pamphlet saying that it was a put together document. It wasn't what Martin Harris actually wrote. So I, so in defense, uh, with the rest of the world, I have my little piece in the newsletter that says, well, uh, it doesn't have to mean it was copied. It could just mean that, Cal that Martin Harris always used the same phrases. And so when his friends tell his stories, you're hearing echoes of Martin Harris through the friends, and that could account for the plagiarism. And Gerald says, no, it isn't that way. I'm telling you, it's uh, the different People that wrote about their experiences with Martin Harris came first, this came later, and this is an invented document that is not truly Martin Harris. And this was another thing. What if Gerald hadn't exposed it? Because the church immediately got into uh, sort of the, <clears throat> let's give this story a, a, a pious reading. And they were saying, well, actually, you know, in those days, salamanders were often the name of angels, you know, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> things like this. So they were covering themselves up so that it wouldn't trouble anybody and it would just be sort of swept under the, yeah. on, and it was published in, in collections of Joseph Smith's writings and, and all these things. And so if Gerald had never questioned it, it may still be regarded as yeah. uh, authentic. And then when at Mark Hoffman's trial, he admitted that basically he did it like Gerald said, and he even used a Tanner reprint of the book. <laughs> so. <laughs>